Hi, my name is Andy Sykes. I'm an award-winning animator and illustrator based in the UK. Welcome to my lessons on Flash CS5. This is my website, hexjibber.com. You can check out my animation, my illustration, my interactive work, and also more of my video tutorials in Flash. Enjoy. Hi, and welcome to my lesson on how to cell shade in Flash. If you're wondering what cell shading is, if you have a look at these objects that are on the screen right now, they're all cell shaded or they're shaded in a cell shaded style. The term cell shaded comes from the days of traditional animation where pictures were drawn on cells of transparent plastic and were colored in using paint. So the kind of shading, the block tones that you get from painting onto cells look like these objects here. So you get this kind of block tones and you can get some really nice definition to your drawings by using this technique and it also harks back to traditional 2D animation. So I'm going to show you how to do this in Flash. It's really easy. I use it all the time. Here's an example of a picture that I've drawn that I've cell shaded using this technique in Flash. So you can see that there's lighter tones around the left edges of most of the objects. There's a kind of reflection on the hair there. There's a dark tone on the right hand side of the hair and the other objects around. Same on the jeans here and on the other side, on the t-shirt, on the jacket, underneath the belt on this jacket, on the zip. And it just helps images kind of pop and look more three-dimensional and less flat. So you can see on the face, kind of makes that image look rounder. So these are the examples I started off with. Here are some blank ones that just have one tone in there. And I'll show you how we can self-shade these. So what I've done is I've created these objects using the object drawing tool here and I've put object drawing on which you can turn on by clicking this button or pressing J. The advantage of that is that you've got the fill and the stroke all together in one object and you can double click on it and edit it in isolation. So I'm going to grab my Wacom tablet pen and I'm going to use the lasso tool here and what I can do is I can just sort of draw over this fill, I can draw over an area like this. And I can use the pipette tool to make sure I've got this colour. And if I go over to the colour palette here, because I've got this section selected and I'm altering the fill colour, any change I make to this fill will be reflected here on the screen. It won't affect the stroke because we're adjusting the fill colour and not the stroke colour. So what I can do is I can start dialing it down like that. If you're wanting a kind of real-time update, you can use the colour palette here to adjust the colours and they'll actually appear in real time there. And for the lighter tone, I might want to draw it kind of up here. I'll try and think about where light would be hitting the object and how the volume of the object would make that light appear. But a lot of the time I just put dark on the left hand side and light on the right hand side because it makes it look cooler. It depends how accurate you want to be with your cell shading. Okay, so I'm going to adjust it to a kind of lighter colour here. So that's not quite right, but it starts to give you an idea of how we can start giving these objects a bit more form through the use of colour. That one's probably oh, that's a bit nearer to what we want, I think. So there we go. That's the square. Let's move on to the circle. This will be a bit easier, I think. So first off, I'm going to grab this green colour. I'm going to double click on my object to jump inside of it and edit it in isolation. And I reckon I'm going to grab this left hand side here, I'm going to draw a curve out like that. This is much easier to do with a graphics tablet than it is to do with a mouse. Using the lasso tool freehand with a mouse is an absolute pain. So I'd look into getting a graphics tablet if you want to do cell shading. Uh, if you're just starting off, I recommend a Wacom Bamboo because they're really cheap, but they also work really well. And from my experience, they're better than the competitors. I can say that honestly, I'm not being sponsored by Wacom. That's just the reality of it. Okay, so I'm going to 
adjust down so we've got a darker shade there I'm gonna put a lighter shade here so get that color pull it up like that boom there we go so that's already looking more three-dimensional there if I jump out of the object if I want I can use the paintbrush and got to make sure object drawings on so I can choose an even lighter shade of this green, maybe hmm, if I pull it towards the center like that. That'll work. I can put a sort of spot shine on it, like so. Maybe that's not bright enough, so I could brighten that up. Pull it more into the center. There we go, so it's almost white. Fill that in. There we go. I mean, that's pretty rough, but it gives you an idea. Let's move over to our star here. And because we've got some nice pointy edges, we can have some fun with that. So I'm going to just sort of draw over it like that pretty roughly. I'm going to grab the original color, jump into my color palette. And because I'm making this darker, there we go. And again, it depends where your light's coming from. Uh, I'm imagining that light's coming from this direction, so the light will be on this side and the dark will be on that side. But really, it's, it's just a way of giving some tone and giving some definition to the objects. Um, there we go. So I'm going to make this one lighter, of course. Put it into the center, something like that. There we go. So it's a bit rough on this side. We might want to include the bottom as well. So something like that. I was discouraged at art school from using the term shading because I think a lot of people learn how to shade at school and it doesn't necessarily bear any resemblance to how light actually hits objects. But in the case of cell shading, that's definitely what it's called and uh, people will know what you're talking about if you say cell shading, which isn't actually that easy to say. <laughs> okay, so I've done this uh, very roughly. Uh, just let's have a bit more fun. I can start drawing some eyes on top of this square and give it a black stroke. Make the stroke a bit thicker. There we go. It's one of the advantages of uh, using objects is that you can move them around. Okay, I'll just draw a line there and use my editing techniques to bend that into a smiley face. If you don't know how to do that, check out my editing strokes and fills lesson on my website, hexjibber.com. Okay, so let's give some definition to these eyes here. Might just do a dark side rather than the light side because it's already very light. There we go. Like so. I might decide to give him some cool hair. So I might draw it with the pencil tool so that it's a stroke. There we go. He's got some cool hair there. I can fill that in. Give him a kind of funky colour. Okay, so I'll double click on that. If it's not letting me fill, I can just adjust my fill settings to close large gaps. There we go. It's done that. And I might give that on one side, make it a little bit darker. Pull it down like that. And on one side, maybe a little bit lighter, although it's already pretty garish. Boom. There we go. You can see we've already created an image that has a lot more depth to it and has that kind of cell shaded appeal. It's obviously a very simple drawing. A more advanced application of this, we'll just have a look at, obviously growing up in the 90s, I'm a bit obsessed with Dragon Ball Z. And so I've used these cell shading techniques to draw one of the uh, eponymous Dragon Balls from that series. So what we've got here is an object which has a light orange stroke on it and an orange fill. But you might notice if we zoom in a little bit, this fill is actually a gradient going from 
a darkish orange to a lighter orange in the center. It's quite subtle, but it just gives it a bit more definition. On top of that, we've just got a star shape that I drew with the Polystar tool. Um, we've got some sort of spot shine here. This is a star that I used the Pucker and Bloat tool on in Illustrator to get that kind of ping. If we double click here, you can see I've just used the lasso tool to pull out some of the internal shadow inside what is supposed to be a kind of glass ball. Um, we've got this kind of other larger shadow there. If we zoom in, we can see I've got this gradient. If I click on that, it will show up here in my color swatches. It's a radial gradient, and so we've got kind of lighter orange and a slightly darker orange there. So you get this very subtle kind of gradation of color, which gives it a bit more depth and stops it from feeling too kind of plasticky and synthetic and computery. And here I've created an oval with sort of 20% opacity that gives a nice shadow for this ball here. So there you go. That's cell shading in Flash. Give it a go, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, if you enjoyed this lesson, why not consider checking out the Hextuber Colouring and Activity book on my website, hextuber.com. It's suitable for kids and adults alike, and you can get it from Amazon, Play.com, and WH Smiths. Cheers.